The retiming tools in Apple Motion are far more powerful than that which is in Final Cut Pro. However, with that being said, it's also a bit more complicated. So in this video, we're gonna do a viewer requested tutorial and I'm gonna do my very best to showcase how to use the retiming tools in Apple Motion. The very easiest way to bring in footage with the proper frame rate is to open up the project browser. If you don't get the project browser, you can go up to file new from project browser. Here at the bottom left, we can see that there is import as project. Go ahead and select that. Then from there, you're just gonna wanna import the footage that you want to use. Now there are several different ways you can retime footage inside of Apple Motion. One way is to simply select your clip, then go to the inspector, go to properties and scroll to the very bottom. If this is actually a video clip, you'll see this timing section and we can show that by pressing show. The first button you'll notice under time remap is that it's set to constant speed and that constant value is set here at 100%. But if you want the absolute most control over the exact speed that your clip is going at, you can change it over to variable speed. And you'll notice that that's actually given me some keyframes here in the timeline. If I want to expand out those keyframes, we can go to the keyframe editor here on the far right side, we now have a nice straight linear line showcasing that the frames are going all the way from zero to the very final frame. Now what's super cool about variable speed is we can come in and adjust these keyframes just like with any other clip. For example, if I wanted to add in a keyframe at the pinnacle of the jump here, we could push option and click directly on that line. And so now I know that that keyframe is this exact frame. From there, we could select that keyframe and holding shift, drag it back to the left hand side, now we can see clearly that we're gonna go from zero all the way to that exact frame in this short amount of time. So if I push play, it's going to play back much faster and then slow way down. Additionally, you can add all sorts of easing onto this. So we could right click and we could change it over to ease both. And if we push play, now it's going to ease into that slow motion and you'll notice that it's eased so much that it actually stopped our video. Or we could right click and change the interpolation mode. One way you could do this is to set it over to Bezier. And now, just like with any other keyframe inside of Apple Motion, we can adjust these Bezier curves. So I'm gonna push Option and click on this handle so that I'm not adjusting this other handle to the right side. And now I can just click and drag this however I want to adjust that keyframe. And if we take a look at our video, you can see how it goes in reverse because the keyframes are moving down in space here on the timeline. This is a very technical side to the retiming inside of Apple Motion and definitely takes a lot more practice and knowledge that I just don't have, but hopefully that gives you the basics of working with keyframes in that way. However, there's also a lot more options over here in the retiming panel on the left side. So to cover those, I'm gonna change it from variable speed back to constant speed. If I wanted this entire clip to be sped up by 300%, we could just type in a value of 300% and you'll notice now that my clip is 300% faster. Now this shot is originally in slow motion, so you can see that I've got it back to its original speed. If I push play, everything should be playing out normally. Now just underneath that, you can see we have an in value, an out value, and a duration value. Those don't really pertain as much to retiming, so I'm just gonna skip over those, but there's also a checkbox to reverse a clip, so I could just check that, and now everything will play here in reverse. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that, and then just underneath that is frame blending. Clicking that, you can see that we have our regular blending options. We also have an additional option which is not found over in Final Cut Pro, and that is motion blur blending. Now this does its very best job to mimic motion blur, which is really amazing if you have a shot that doesn't have motion blur because it was shot at a high frame rate. However, you'll notice that it's not doing a perfect job. If we take a look here at the hands, it's pretty choppy with its motion blur. Now my first thought was that I could go into the project settings, scroll to the bottom and adjust the samples and shutter angle and that would maybe adjust the motion blur here, but it doesn't seem to do any of that. If somebody knows how we can add more samples, they can let us know down in the comments. Finally, the last option is optical flow, and that is of course going to be the very best option for the smoothest slow motion, but it's also the most computer intensive. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to none for right now. Underneath that is the end condition. Now this is a really cool feature because at the end of the clip, you'll notice that there is no more footage, but let's say I wanted to extend out this clip even beyond what was there in the timeline. Well, if we set the end condition over to loop and then I go back to the timeline, you'll notice that 
I can continue to stretch this out. And this is in fact going to loop that clip over and over. So if I push play, it's just gonna go back to playing it from the very beginning. Additionally though, there is this ping pong option. And so now when it gets to the end, it's just gonna continue to play the clip in reverse back to its very first frame. And then once it gets to the end, it's going to continue back in forward motion. And then just underneath that is the hold frame. So this is really great if you just want it to completely pause at the end, we'll push play. And once it hits the end, it's just going to lock off just like so. Now underneath that is also this end duration slider. If we adjust this, you can see how we're just adjusting the length of our hold frame in our timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and just set this back to none to trim everything back down to its original timing. So that is the basics of all the timing features here on the left-hand panel, but there's actually far more powerful features when it comes to retiming inside of Apple Motion. And this is one of the big reasons why I truly believe that Apple Motion has better retiming features than that which is found inside of Final Cut Pro. To access these retiming features, you'll just need to go up to the top to behaviors, and then you'll see this retiming panel. Now, one thing to note, as far as I'm aware, this only allows you to apply it to a video clip. Whenever I try to apply it to a shape or something like that, it doesn't seem to work. So just make sure you're only applying this over to a video clip, otherwise it's not gonna work. In here, you are going to notice there are a ton of options. I don't have time to get into all of these, but I am gonna cover a few of my favorites and hopefully get you up and running quickly. First and foremost, the one you're likely going to use the most often is this set speed. If I click on that, you'll notice it gives me a purple parameter behavior here in the timeline, and that indicates that wherever this is, it's going to set the speed of this clip. So right now, if I were to change this over to 50%, this entire clip is going to play back at 50% slower. So pushing play, we can see it's playing back in slow motion. And it should be noted that that speed is based off the original speed that we set in the timing panel here at 300%. So it's gonna essentially be playing it back at 150%. However, what is super cool about this specific feature is I can very easily set an exact part of the video to retime. So for example, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and just trim this over a bit. We'll find the exact moment where we want that jump to happen right about here. And I'm just gonna push I. Now we know that at that moment, this is where the speed is gonna go down to 50%. Additionally, there are a bunch of easing options. We can go over to the left-hand side and you'll see ease in time. It's gonna take 20 frames for it to reach that 50% speed. And to really make this noticeable, I'm gonna go ahead and change it from 50 down to 25%. We could even go another step selecting our clip We could go down to the frame blending and change it from none over to optical flow Reselecting the set speed. Let's go ahead and play back and see how that looks You'll see it slows way down to that 25% speed and if we wanted it to speed back up We could go ahead and shorten this down quite a bit and so now once this purple parameter behavior ends, the speed is gonna go back to its original state. It should also be noted that because we slowed down this portion of the video, we actually have additional video we can extend at the end. So I'll just click and drag that. And so now the video can actually be extended quite a bit because of that retiming factor here in the middle. So again, pushing play, it slows way down. And then at the end, it's gonna speed back up to its original speed. So that is the set speed parameter, but let's go ahead and delete that. You'll notice our clip shrinks back to its original size. We can go up to behaviors, retiming, and another one that I really love is this ping pong feature. So I'll just click and add that. We could shorten it up if we wanted to, and we could change the duration. So right now it's set to 30 frames. Let's just go ahead and leave it at that. So it's going to play back, and then it will start to reverse after 30 frames. So you can extend this out as much as you want and continue to loop your footage for as long as you need to. And then at the end, you could continue to extend out your clip and pushing play, it's gonna go back and forth and then it'll go forward in its regular direction. Another one of the retiming tools I love to use is under behaviors, retiming, and we can select scrub. Now with scrub, everything will play back at its normal rate. However, if we wanted to set a very specific amount of time between two points, we could go ahead and use keyframes just like we did earlier with the variable speed. The difference is that this is actually a parameter behavior now. We can go to the top left and you'll see the frame offset is zero and that is set to the current frame. If you're feeling really crazy, you can change it to the first frame, but I almost always leave it on current frame. From there, we can find the moment that we want to add a keyframe. I'll go 
ahead and do that. Then we can move forward and we could offset this exact moment by dragging up this frame offset value. So now between these two points, we've vastly sped up our video and we've completely offset everything. So pushing play, it speeds up like crazy. Another one you might frequently find yourself using is hold frame. Now, if I wanted to set this hold frame to be in the middle, I'll just drag that there. And if we push play, everything locks off and then it continues to play after the fact. It should also be noted that you can offset this hold frame. So if I drag that up and then we push play, it will immediately jump to that hold frame if we wanted to offset it. I'm not totally sure all of the use cases behind that, but it is there should you need it. And finally, the last one I wanted to cover is this flash frame. This one is a much more unique effect and would be useful for something like a music video or if you really wanted to disorient the viewer. Going to the top left, you can see the random frames. It's set to 10. So I believe that means that 10 times out of the duration here, it's going to give you a random frame. Let's go ahead and just set that to 100 so we can really see the given effects. The frame range is set to 10. So from my understanding, I believe it's going to choose a random frame from within 10 frames of whatever the given frame is when it applies this effect. Then the duration is set to one. I believe that means it's going to be just one frame long. Just so we can really see the effect, let's set it to three. So if I were to push play, we'll see that this is really going to disorient this entire video. So it's kind of giving us a glitchy stutter effect. Now, if we really wanted to go crazy, we could set the duration to this to one. We could set our frame range to 100. And so now let's push play and see how this looks. You could see how that would give a really disorienting feel to a viewer watching your video. So this is just a few of the powerful retiming tools found in Apple Motion. If you enjoyed this, let me know and I can make a part two covering the rest of the powerful tools. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may want to check out this video where I show you how to build a hover animation for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.